So number seven then from the second paper of the 2014 Higher Maths. Just glancing at the pictures, area between curves. Bit of information here that just replicates the diagram apart from this little significant bit. Each square unit, you know that when you work out the area you should really finish up by saying area equals unit squared because you don't really know what size those units are. But this time it does tell you. It says one square unit is actually 300 square metres. So that means when I get my answer to the integration, I'm going to do times 300. But as far as integration is concerned, that's quite straightforward. I've got a top, I've got a bottom, and I don't know where they cross, so I'll need to find that first. So I'm looking for my limits. Well, substituting the equation should give that. So for my limits, I would have 2x equal to 6x minus x squared. Flip it over to this side x squared minus 6x plus 2x equals 0. We should have just done that while I was at it. x squared minus 4x equals 0. That factor is a, factorises quite nicely to x times x minus 4 equals 0. So x equals 0, which I knew, or x equals 4, which is what I want. So now we can work out the area. The area I'll be looking for is the area from 0 to 4 of the top, take away the bottom. Now the top is 6x minus x squared. Now I know you end up with it in here, but that could have the opposite sign though. So as well, just writing this out properly here. 6x minus x squared minus the 2x dx. And then tidy that up, 0 to 4 of, and then that will be 4x minus x squared dx. There, it was the opposite way around to that one. Now it's just a case of carry out the integration. So add 1 to the power, divide by the power, might as well just do that on the spot, that'll be a 2. Add 1 to the power, that'll be a 3. Divide by that power, I'll just think I'll just write that as a third. And evaluate that twice. So Evaluated at 4, minus evaluated at 0. Now it's just the tedious bit. First of all, substitute the values in. So it's 2 times 4 squared, minus a third of 4 cubed, minus. Now you could just pop 0 into there, because you know it'll be 0, but I think I'll just be annoying and just put 2 times 0 squared, minus a third of 0 cubed. But now I'll just say that's 0. So what's this? I know you could, again, it's paper too, you could just Put that in your calculator. Well, 4 squared is 16, so that's 32. 4 cubed is 64, so it's minus 64 upon 3. Well, turn it all into thirds. That would be 96 upon 3, minus the 64 upon 3. Take that away, leaves 32. So the area is 32 upon 3 units squared, but each unit was 300 square metres. So now I can say that means the area is 32 upon 3 times 300 square metres. That knocks that down to 100. I've got no room, I'll just put it to the side. So the final answer will be 3,200 square metres. Now part B. A road is built parallel to the railway line. Y equals 2x was the railway line, so there's some road parallel to it, so presumably its equation will be y equals, it must have the same gradient, 2x plus some other number. What's the area contained between this road and the path? Again, it's the area between two curves. This time it's this little area here I need. So I'll need the equation of the top curve, and I'll need this point of contact here. Now that point of contact is a point of tangency. And what do you know about that point of tangency? You know that the gradient must be two. Maybe we should make a statement. If it's a parallel line, that means that the gradient is two. So on this curve, I'm looking for the equation of a tangent to the curve where I know the gradient. Well, I've got the curve itself, I've got this. y equals 6x minus x squared. That's the equation of this parabola. The gradient's different at all the points along this parabola. 
I want to find the point in this parabola where the tangent is parallel to this line, where the tangent is a gradient of 2. So I'll need gradients. Well, the gradient is given by dy by dx. Differentiate it, that'll be 6 minus 2x. And then I can say since the gradient's 2, I can say that this should equal 2. So this means that 6 minus 2x should equal 2. Take that over to that side if you like. So 2x equals 6 minus 2. I'll write it down. Just using up more space, unfortunately. 2x equals 4, which means x equals 2. Now we know my limits. It's between 0 and 2 that I'm carrying out the integration. I still don't have the equation of the top curve, though. This line on the top. Well, that means I'll need the y-coordinate of that point to finish that off. Well, popping that back into the original equation, I'll have this. Well, no, I'll just say this. Substitute x equals 2 in my original equation 1. I'll have y equals 6 times 2 minus 2 squared. 12 minus 4, so y equals 8. So now we can see the equation of that line is y minus 8 equals the gradient, which is 2 times x minus 2. Or maybe you could have written y minus b equals mx minus a, first of all. I'm just going to put short of space. So that y equals, and I want it in the form of y equals, of course, because when you work out an area, it's the width of these, it's the area of these little thin strips, and the heights of them are given by the y coordinate of the top minus the y coordinate of the bottom. y equals 2x minus 4 plus 8, y equals 2x plus 4. So that was the equation of the top line, y equals 2x plus 4. Now I've run out of room. I'll put it down here and go over there. So what's this area then? Well, I know everything I need to know about it. I know my limits because it goes from 0 to here, which is x equals 2. So it's from 0 to 2 of the top is given by y equals 2x plus 4. The bottom is given by 6x minus x squared. All of that dx. Because remember, of course, that's the height of the little strip times the width of the little strip. I'll just tidy it up here, then I'll have to move somewhere else. 0 to 2 of, now watch, that's going to be a, take away negative, that's going to be a positive x squared. So I think I'll put that in first. Then that'll be 2x minus 6x is minus 4x plus 4 dx. That's what I'll need to integrate. And then remember, of course, that each unit is 300. Rather than a bottle, I'll just move over to here now. So I've got then the area will be one third of x cubed. Add one to the power, divide by the power. Minus, that'll go to x squared. Dividing by two makes that, dividing by two makes that four go to a two, rather than write it all out. Plus, that'll go back to a linear term, four x. It's this evaluated from zero to two. So that'll be a third of, now the tedious bit, the substitutions, 2 cubed, 2 squared, 2 minus, I know it's just 0, maybe I'll just stick in 0, nah, yes, no. A third of 0 cubed, 2 times 0 squared, plus 4 times 0, can you see that? I can't. Equals, well that's just 0. So what's this? Eight, 2 to the power 3 is 8 over 3, I know you can just put in your calculator. 8 upon 3 minus, but that's 4 doubled is 8, and that's 8. So that means it just comes to 8 upon 3 squared units. So the area of this little section on this graph is 8 upon 3 squared units, and the unit squared indicates that this is just a graph calculation. In real life, of course, the area is going to be 8 upon 3 times 300 square metres. So the area is going to be, that will cancel down to 100 times it, 800 square metres. There. That was question seven.